Welcome back to the show. Today we're talking about sex-selective abortion, otherwise known as gendercide, and a bill that's going through the Parliament of Canada right now regarding this issue with Member of Parliament from Yorkton, Melville, Saskatchewan, Kathy Wagenthal. stretch of Canadians agree on this issue. The United Sikhs of Canada plus the Vedic Hindu Community Society indicating that they want to see equality be protected right from the earliest stages of life. The general population has a significant role to play because when you have 84% of Canadians in agreement that we should have legislation criminalizing sex selection abortion, you can contact your member of parliament and say, I am one of that 84%. Sex-selective abortion is the intentional abortion of a baby on the primary basis of its gender, normally because it's a girl. The practice is often referred to as gendercide. After a CBC journalistic piece revealing that the practice of gendercide was indeed happening in Canada, in 2013, MP Mark Warwa put forward a motion M408 calling upon Parliament to denounce the practice. A survey at the time actually showed that 92% of Canadians would have been in support of such a motion. In spite of this public support, a small inter-party committee shut down the motion behind closed doors because they determined that it was unvotable. Shortly before this, an international film, It's a Girl, was also released exposing the prevalence of this practice internationally. Almost a decade later, MP Kathy Wagenthal has picked up the cause to protect girls from this type of discrimination through tabling her bill, C-233, Sex Selective Abortion Act. It's had its introduction and first reading over a year ago on February 26, 2020, and was seconded by MPs Rosemary Falk and Ted Falk. After being delayed because of COVID-19, it's now expected to come up for debate in April of 2021. Here with me today is MP Kathy Wagenthal to discuss her bill, why she felt to pick it up, and her hopes for it. So without further delay, let's get to it. CBC revealed that ultrasounds are being used in Canada to tell the sex of the unborn child so that if it's a girl, the pregnancy will end. 92% of Canadians believe that sex selective pregnancy termination should be made illegal. Mr. Speaker, they're calling on all members of Parliament to condemn this practice. They've also highlighted that the Conservative Party's policy is that this be condemned. Encourage the members of opposite to also condemn this practice. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, and I'm presenting two petitions today on behalf of Canadians calling upon the House of Commons to pass a criminal code prohibition of sex selection abortion. The rationale is that sex selection abortion is legal in Canada as there are no legal restrictions on abortion here. Sex selective abortion is antithetical to our commitment as Canadians to equality between men and women. And 80, uh, a poll shows that 84% of Canadians believe it should be illegal to have an abortion if the family does not want the child to be a certain sex. And the World Health Organization, United Nations Women and United Nations Children Fund have identified equal sex ratios at birth as a growing problem in the world, and Canada's own healthcare professionals have recognized that sex selective abortion is a growing problem in Canada. Thank you, Speaker. The second petition that I'm presenting today is on gender selection. The Canadians that have signed this petition are concerned that this practice is happening right here in Canada and are calling for this House to pass legislation condemning that. I table this petition on behalf of Canadians calling on Parliament to prohibit abortions based on gender. In Canada, the important practice of sex selective abortions is legally permitted, but I believe a broad consensus exists amongst Canadians to end it. A National Post opinion poll reported that 84% of Canadians believe it should not be permitted to end a pregnancy if a family does not want a child based on gender. I hope this consensus will be reflected in Canada's criminal code by our parliament. Thank you. Well, Kathy, Kathy Wagenthal, thank you so much, first off, for taking time out of your busy parliamentary schedule to join me uh, by Zoom today. 
It's awfully good to be here. Thanks so much, Fatim. Yeah, and it's been a long time coming. I know the first time that we spoke about your bill, it was probably almost a year ago now. You tabled it in February of 2020. So obviously huge delay here. But why don't you give for our viewers just a quick update on uh, the heart of the bill and your motivation in, in picking this up? Sure. Thanks so much. Well, the heart of the bill is basically uh, a case where it would amend the criminal code to create a new penalty for medical practitioners who knowingly performed an abortion that was solely sought on the grounds of the preborn child's genetic sex. And in this case, it would criminalize the doctor if they knowingly performed an abortion under those circumstances. So the intent was to respond honestly to the majority of Canadians and the desire to see some limitations placed on abortion. Right now in Canada, the majority of people do want to have abortion access, but they were very appalled at this particular uh, instance as well as others and wanted to see some restrictions brought in, which is something that should have been done, as you know, many, many years ago. So that's the passion behind my wanting to do it. It's something that unifies our country on an issue that uh, supposedly we've been very polarized on, but we find with this uh, circumstance, 84% of Canadians agree that sex selection abortion is wrong. Okay, so when Mark Warwa initially brought, not a bill for it, but just a motion, this was back in 2013, if I'm remembering correctly, you know, at that point, 92% of Canadians said that they were opposed to sex-selective abortion. Now, this recent poll, uh, it sounds like it had a few different questions in it. People even who were pro-choice, you're saying, even 84% of those individuals uh, were actually against sex-selective abortion. Am I understanding the polling correctly? Yeah, the polling basically showed that a wide uh, stretch of, of Canadians agree on this issue. So we are not polarized the way uh, a lot of the mainstream media and various political parties would want you to think we are. So what this did is gave us uh, the critical mass representing Canadians to come forward with an actual bill uh, rather than simply a motion. Because a motion just expresses a concern within the House of Commons. It doesn't have any teeth. It doesn't have any impact unless it is then moved into a case where it's presented as a bill. Okay. So in a moment, I'm going to talk about cross-party reaction to this. But first of all, let's start with cross-community reaction. I think a lot of times when something like this is put forward on that touches the abortion issue, people just assume this is a, a sneaky backdoor to kind of open up the abortion debate or that it's a religious thing, a religiously motivated thing. What is the response that you're getting um, from different communities in Canada when you've presented this bill? You've had a year now to talk about it. Yeah, sure. Actually, I've been really pleased because we've had uh, letters of confirmation of support from ethnic communities, from the United Sikhs of Canada, plus the Vedic uh, Hindu Community Society in British Columbia, indicating that they support this bill. So that's really significant uh, that we have that kind of support amongst the ethnic communities in our country. And that says that they want to have the same values as we do, and they do already. And that is equality quality for women, right? And when uh, that type of statement is made by those communities, it means that they want to see this law put into effect and that uh, equality be protected right from the earliest stages of life. And then I had another very uh, enjoyable circumstance where I went to a feminism class at a college and to talk about being uh, a a woman member of parliament and I had just tabled the bill and as it turned out all they wanted to do was talk about my bill and I thought oh how's this going to go well they were appalled to learn that there isn't a law in Canada protecting uh, equality of women in the case of abortion so I was really pleased to see that level of support that says this is not an issue that is uh, within a very limited scope of uh, perspectives this is something that is seen as wrong and needs to be uh, put put in, enforced into law uh, by the majority of Canadians. So let's talk about inter-parliamentary uh, response to this you know I, I saw one study that said that the Bloc Quebecois is actually very supportive of your bill. Is that correct? Well, I, I think what you're referring to was a poll that was done that indicated uh, to individuals that if this legislation was a policy within your party, is this something that you would support? And the results that came back were very revealing because 
the block actually had the highest uh, results, indicating that I believe it was 62% of those who had voted block in the last election and took part in this survey uh, would appreciate that being part of their platform. It wouldn't turn them off or, or be a matter of concern. It, it was actually the opposite, that they would be pleased to see that. And there wasn't a single political party where uh, those numbers weren't up there, well above 50%, 52%. So uh, yeah, even higher actually than within my own party, that response was there from the bloc and in Quebec. So, so that's very significant, as well as the Liberal Party. Well over half of their uh, their individuals that voted Liberal in the last election indicated that they would be fine with seeing this as part of their platform. Yeah, in my observation, when you really dial it down just to the issue, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a single parliamentarian or Canadian that would say, yeah, I think you should be able to do gender side in Canada to abort a baby on the basis of its gender. But I think a lot of times our parliamentarians are afraid to edge into this because it's the the whole domain of abortion, right? It's more of a political reason. And so to somebody who's watching this right now and they just, you know, they're hoping that our members of parliament will really have, have courage on this one and vote their uh, instinctive conscience, hopefully, uh, what would you say to those people out there about how to encourage their members of parliament on this very you know, it can be a very touchy issue. Sure. And I think that's where uh, the general population has a significant role to play uh, in getting this bill passed. Because when you have 84% of Canadians in agreement that this bill makes sense and we should have legislation criminalizing sex selection abortion, you can contact your member of parliament and say, I am one of that 84% of Canadians that wants to see this passed. It isn't something that you can play politics with, and it certainly has been used uh, as a sword against the Conservative Party in the past, right? And that can't be the case. If, if we put this forward, I know that right now, uh, within every party in the House, as you as you mentioned, uh, Faitine, it's a bit of a problem for them, because who is going to say that actually no uh, equality doesn't apply in this circumstance. So please uh, call your M member of parliament, call their constituency office, call them in Ottawa, write a letter, write an email, uh, just from your own heart and just say, this is something that I believe is really important. We talk about being a country that values equality between men and women here at home in our own country and internationally. And if that is the case, then certainly I expect you to support uh, this private member's bill, C233. Yeah, and that statistic, the 84%, I, to say I'm a part of the 84%, that's that's a very powerful uh, and easy point to make. So thank you so much for highlighting that. They're finding themselves in a circumstance where they can no longer just use the talking points they've always used because the majority of Canadians, the majority of women, see this as wrong and that it should be illegal. We love Canada, and we want to see it strong for generations to come. That's why we do this show. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Unlike commercial TV, this program is 100% donor funded. If you'd like to see more episodes produced on important issues for our nation, please consider signing up to be a monthly partner or giving a special gift today. Every gift makes a real difference and all gifts are tax deductible. Together, we can build a better Canada for the future. Visit fayteen.tv or call 1-866-844-0844 to donate today.
We just passed International Day of the Women, and something that is often spoken about is gender-based violence. Uh, right now, I'm going to actually show a clip that we can watch um, where Rachel Harder and the current cabinet minister in charge of uh, status of women, Maria Monsef, actually kind of went head-to-head, -head, or not kind of, did go head-to-head -head in a parliamentary committee on this whole issue of gender side and gender-based violence. And so let's watch this clip, and then I would love to get your response. As you're aware, your mandate letter says that you're supposed to implement a policy or a strategy with regards to violence against women. Um, further to this committee, of course, we put a report forward with regards to that. Now, this is an issue that, of course, I am very passionate about. And one of the things that is rarely discussed is a report that came out in 2012 from the Canadian Medical Association. And in this report, they actually talk about gender-selective abortion. So they talk about here in Canada, there are actually upwards of 2,000 abortions that are committed every year in order to essentially get rid of girls. Now, I would, I would say that this is actually gender-based violence um, targeted at little, little girls, pre-born girls. And so I'm wondering if you agree with this statement. Your statement being is, what? Is this violence? Does it fit within your mandate? I believe that violence uh, comes at a spectrum. That it can it's, it's be actually a really physical, simple question. It's that just it yes can or no. be psychological, that it can be emotional, and that it can be cyber. So in this case, do you believe that this is discriminating against girls? I believe, uh, so I think what you would like to speak to me about is abortions, and I believe that women have no, a fundamental I'm, right I'm asking to be able about to gender control their reproductive which were identified health and rights. In this report. Sorry, I didn't hear anything you said because I was answering your question. You weren't answering my question, actually. Okay. You were avoiding it. Do you believe that sex-selective abortions, as identified by the Canadian Medical Association in 2012, are gender-based violence? Yes or no? I believe that any sort of gender-based violence is wrong. I understand that women and girls in Canada are vulnerable uh, to all sorts of forms of okay. violence. Thank you, uh, Minister. And preventing that violence is a shared responsibility for us all. I also believe the importance of Thank giving you. women choice. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I have to admit, Kathy, that's a little, a little bit painful to watch. <laughs> You know, because here, Miriam Monsef is saying, you know, we we need to denounce gender-based violence, and yet she can't bring herself to actually admit that this is so obviously clearly gender-based violence. 2,000 a year. My, that's staggering. Talk about this for a second, Kathy. What just happened there? Well, you know, this is what happens when um, political parties get stuck in a rut and uh, don't evolve with the science and the proof. So she she was trying to defend a place that's really indefensible. Uh, right now, uh, as you mentioned, the Canadian Medical Association, Rachel was speaking of, they've come out and indicated that this is a growing problem in Canada. Uh, in, in the journals, there's been a number, uh, two different reports that were done up based specifically in Canada, where this is happening. And it appalls people when they hear that it is. They just can't believe, first of all, that anyone would do that. And the second thing, that we have no laws around uh, protecting uh, baby girls in the womb. So the Canadian uh, Medical Journal, as I mentioned, has has write-ups, and as well the Society of Ob Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, they have indicated they do not support termination of pregnancy based on gender. And a number of our colleges of physicians and surgeons, Ontario and British Columbia, have echoed those same views. So there's no question that uh, Rachel is on the right side of the conversation here because gender-based violence is exactly what's happening when you're choosing to have an abortion solely on the basis of the sex of the child. And I'll maybe mention something here, Fatin. You know, we have paper petitions that have been coming into the House, and every time I have 25 signatures, one of us uh, stands up in the House and presents it, and then the Minister of Justice has to reply. And eventually that reply did start coming, and I I'd like to just read it to you because this will uh, re-emphasize where the Minister was talking in one di linear direction that they have always spoken, and now um, their views are having to change. So the response from the minister was, the government of Canada condemns all practices that are motivated by discriminatory views of women and girls, including sex-selective practices. This is the Minister of Justice, David Lametti? Yes. That is amazing. 
Right. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're finding themselves in a circumstance where they can no longer just use the talking points they've always used because the majority wow. of Canadians, the majority of women see this as wrong and that it should be illegal in Canada. Wow. And that right there, if, if David Lemeny, the current minister of justice, who's tight with Justin Trudeau, who's very pro-choice, very pro-abortion, not just pro-choice, pro-abortion. If he's coming out saying that, that's got to have an impact on the conservative caucus. Have you seen any response from some of your conservative colleagues that perhaps have been a little bit uh, um, tentative about, about your bill? Well, it's all adding up, right? So it's a matter of just continuing to bring forward all of these different circumstances where it affirms that this is something that we should be doing as lawmakers in Canadian society. Now, I have to add that in that response from uh, the Minister of Justice, they then go on to say in Canada, the administration and funding of health care services is a provincial responsibility. So do you hear what's happening here? We agree with this. However but they're ready to punt it down to the provinces to take responsibility for. But we know that this government with C7 made legislation has made major decisions around health issues for Canadians. And this is certainly something that requires a federal response. So that's the approach that we'll be taking as we move forward with it. What can people do other, is there anything that they can do other than contacting their member of parliament and senator, or member of parliament, excuse me? Well, you know, I would encourage them to reach out, not just to, to their own member of parliament, but to any members of parliament that they can reach out to. And of course, that means a lot of work on your part. But you know what? Canadians have been amazing through the last four or five years. My first experience of being in the House of really engaging I don't think like they have engaged in a very long time on so many issues that are relevant uh, to our freedoms and our sense of what we value here in Canada as a nation. So do absolutely reach out as much as you can. Go online and post and repost and encourage others to to uh, do the same as you are doing and build a, build a swell of uh, responses to members of parliament so that they can't ignore this or come up with other excuses for why they wouldn't support it. When only 16% of Canadians don't value this legislation, they are, are not um, they are not agreeing with the majority of pro-choice men and women. So it's important to understand that this is an issue that is broad across all Canadians. It's not a pro-life, pro abortion issue. It is about something that all Canadians agree on where we need to have parameters. And that's what was asked of us, you know, how many years ago with the Morgenthaler decision that, uh, you know, there should be some parameters that protect the fetus. Even Mr. Morgenthaler said the same, that it shouldn't be outside of the first trimester. And the majority of Canadians think we have these laws in place and we don't. And it's time. Yeah, even Pierre Elliott Trudeau Sr. agreed that there should be some limits on abortion. And you're right. I know some major senior media commentators, I won't name names, but who just recently discovered, yes. uh, you know, that you can abort a baby right up until third trimester. And I love what you said there, Kathy, about this is this, though, is a bill where pro-choicers and pro-lifers can meet because it's really a pro-woman bill. And also, as I understand it, this is already an approved policy on the conservative in the conservative policy handbook. Book. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And actually, there's already a law, uh, criminal law on sex selection abortion in regards to in vitro fertilization. You know, we, we know the sex of that child the instant the egg and the sperm join. Like, it's phenomenal. But you are not allowed to choose the embryo for implantation based on the sex of that embryo. So we already have legislation in place in that regard. So not why, why, why we would not have it when we're talking about sex selection abortion, where you're removing that life in the womb simply because it's a girl. Yeah, and that's another powerful point that people can raise with their with our legislators that there's legislative precedence uh, for this. That's amazing. Um, so now, back in 2011, I think there was a documentary that was released. It's a girl, which kind of really kicked this whole conversation into the proverbial field. Where can people go other than to that documentary to get more informed on this whole issue of gender side? Do you have any resources you can point our viewers to as we begin to close? Absolutely, yes. On my web 
uh, page, kathywagenthal.ca. I have a link there specifically in regards to my bill. And there's a lot of documents there as well as interviews and uh, reports. And you can certainly go to uh, other organizations that have been so supportive like you, Fatin, uh, in, in the role that you play. Other organizations like We Need a Law who are there um, presenting this same issue that there are no laws in Canada. And right now they're running a, a pink flag display program and pink envelope program where they're just reaching out and, and letting members of parliament know that this is something that Canadians want. Wow, fantastic. Thank you so much for highlighting those resources and putting them all up there on your website. Kathy, thank you so much for your courage, your compassion, and your common sense on this one, for sure. Any final words for our viewers today? Uh, I just want to say it's an incredible privilege and opportunity to represent in the House of Commons and to be able to bring forward a private member's bill on something that's so important to Canadians that, you know, was lost in the fray of the political arena. And so this is something that's an incredible opportunity for us as members of parliament. And I take it very seriously and I'm very humbled uh, to have this opportunity. Wow, well, thank you for serving. Thank you for sticking your neck out. And thank you for joining me today. It's been an honor having you with me again. Thanks so much, Faye team. Thank you so much for joining me today for this important and very eye-opening, disturbing conversation regarding the reality of sex-selective abortion. I want to encourage you to pick up the phone, call your member of parliament. Let's be a voice on this issue for the sake of the little girls in Canada and also girls worldwide. This is an important issue to raise awareness on. So maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to share this show with my friends. Well, I've got good news for you. You can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our YouTube channel. You can also download our free iPhone app. And both on our YouTube channel and our iPhone app, you can actually set the preference to get a reminder so that you never miss a show. And you can also watch previous episodes there as well. Or you can just go to fateen.tv. Finally, I want to give a wholehearted thank you to all of our monthly partners and special donors. You are the ones that keep us at it. You enable us to be able to do interviews like the ones that we did today. And so we appreciate you. We're praying for you. Also, if you would like to join the monthly partnership team or give a special gift today, we are a media charity. And so all gifts are tax receivable. You can go to fateen.tv to give a special gift or sign up to partner. Or you can also just call us at 1-866-844-0844 myself, my husband, or one of the team would be happy to chat with you. Thank you again for joining me today, and I hope to see you next week. Prayer is undeniably one of the most powerful forces in the universe. It has the power to reach through walls, across regions, and into the hardest of situations to bring change. It has the power to save lives. That is why we are committed to raising up 24-7 prayer for our nation. Through the Justice Wall, you can sign up for a 15-minute prayer slot every week to pray for life in Canada, to pray for an end to human trafficking, and for godly government in every region of our nation. Sign up for one or many weekly prayer times. You'll even be given weekly reminders and prayer directives if you want them. Visit www.justicewall.com to sign up for your time and join with believers from sea to sea who are standing on guard for our nation every week through prayer www.justicewall.com